and welcome to Hada Gastro. In today's video, we're going to be talking about a very common and interesting topic, and that is the mumps virus. So let's get started. So what is mumps? Mumps is a contagious viral disease that is caused by the mumps virus. The disease typically starts with a few days of fever, headache, muscle aches, tiredness, and a loss of appetite. Following this, the patient will then suffer from the swelling of their salivary glands, which causes puffy cheeks and a tender swollen jaw. So these glands are responsible for producing the saliva, hence the name salivary glands. So there are three sets of salivary glands on each side of the face, located behind and below the ears. The hallmark symptoms of the mumps virus is the swelling of these salivary glands. Mumps used to be a common childhood illness around the world, especially in kids aged between 5 to 9 years old. But it's much rarer now, however, thanks to the mumps vaccine. So from this definition of the mumps virus, we get that it's a contagious viral disease and it's caused by the virus called the mumps virus. So the hallmark symptom for this virus is actually the swelling of the salivary glands. So there are actually three sets of salivary glands that we have. The first one and the largest one is the parotid gland. We then have the submandibular gland and then we have the sublingual gland. So one set is actually found on the right side of the face and the other set is found on the left side of the face. And these glands are very important to us because they help us produce the saliva, which is important to keep our mouths moist and they also play a role in the digestion of the food we intake. So in addition to this puffy face aspect that is typical to patients who suffer from mumps, these patients also suffer from fever, headaches, muscle aches, tiredness and a loss of appetite. So the disease actually used to be more prevalent and more serious infections used to be recorded but thanks to the emergence of the mumps vaccine, very serious cases of this disease are now very rare and most infections don't reach a very serious complicative stage. So now that we know what the basics of this mumps virus is, let's take a closer look at how one can contract this disease. So as we mentioned in the slide before, mumps is a highly contagious disease. So it spreads in the tiny droplets of fluid when someone with the virus sneezes, coughs, talks or laughs. So it actually spreads through this process when someone sneezes or coughs out these viral particles and they settle and are inhaled by another person. Or it can also be spread indirectly by coming into contact with objects that an infected person may have touched such as dirty tissues, straws or drinking glasses. So we can also get the disease by touching objects or surfaces with unwashed hands. So when these patients who are infected cough or sneeze, many of these viral particles actually land on surfaces. They can land on surfaces such as a door handle or even a glass and another person can come along and touch this object and then touch their face or their nose and in this way the disease can be transmitted to them. So the best way to protect your kids is to make sure they get vaccinated against mumps. So for most kids, mumps protection is part of the MMR vaccine, which is the mumps measles rubella vaccine, or another vaccine which is found in some other countries known as the mumps measles rubella and varicella vaccine, or the MMRV vaccine. And in both cases, kids usually receive their first dose at 12 to 15 months of age, and again when they're around 4 to 6 years of age. So there's two doses of these vaccines, and these vaccines are highly effective in helping us to prevent the onset of many childhood viral infections, such as mumps, rubella, varicella, and measles. So now that we know how one can contract this disease, let's take a closer look at some signs and symptoms of this disease. So as we mentioned in the first slide, the primary sign of mumps is the swollen salivary glands that cause the cheeks to puff out. So the majority of patients actually come in with these very large puffed up cheeks. So the other signs and symptoms can include pain in the swollen saliva glands on one or both sides of the face. So usually the virus affects one side and then it actually travels to the other side. So they usually come in first with one side, either the left side completely inflamed and then it reaches the right side or even the right side which is completely inflamed which can reach the left side. So these patients in addition to having this puffy face they will also experience extreme pain in this area. So it's very tender and painful. So they will experience pain while chewing or swallowing, fevers, a headache, muscle aches, weakness and fatigue, and a loss of appetite. 
So I just want to briefly explore some complications of mumps. So this is not actually very common, but it can occur in more serious infections with this disease. So some patients may experience painful testicular inflammation, and this develops in 15 to 40 percent of men who have completed puberty and contract the mumps virus, and decreased fertility later in life may result, however infertility is rare. So even though this is a common childhood infection, adults can actually become infected, and we can have painful testicular inflammation, not just in older people, but in the younger kids as well. So the inflamed testes is called orchitis, and is actually found in about 15 to 40% of males who contract the mumps virus. So in pregnant mums who contract the disease, so mumps virus during pregnancy may lead to an increased rate of spontaneous abortion. So pregnant mums can actually suffer a miscarriage if they contract the mumps virus. So the mumps virus can cause the infection of the brain itself, which is called encephalitis, but this occurs in 0.02 to 0.3 cases. Female patients who contract this disease may suffer from ovarian inflammation, and this occurs in about 5% of adolescent and adult females. So as we can see here, this is what the swelling of these ovaries actually look like, and this is called oophoritis. So some of these patients may also suffer from an acute pancreatic inflammation, and this occurs in about 4% of cases, and this manifests as abdominal pain and vomiting. So these patients can actually suffer from an acute pancreatitis. And the last complication that some patients may suffer from with the mumps virus is sensorineural hearing loss, which can occur and which can be uni or bilateral. So some of these patients can also suffer some sensorineural hearing loss. So now let's talk about the diagnosis of the mumps virus. So the physical examination confirms the presence of swollen glands and usually the disease is diagnosed on clinical grounds and there's no need for confirmatory laboratory tests. So if any uncertainty exists about the diagnosis, a test of the saliva or blood may also be carried out. So the blood test can detect the antibodies in the blood. If the patient has an active infection, the test will show an elevated level of IgM mumps antibodies. So we can do a blood test and then in this blood test we can look for the antibodies against the mumps virus. And this will show us elevated levels of these IgMs, which will shed light on an ongoing current infection. So as we mentioned here, we can also test the saliva. So a salivary culture is a test in which the fluid collected from the saliva is taken to a lab to evaluate for the growth of the virus itself. So these salivary samples are actually cultured on growth mediums and we look for the growth of the new mumps virus. And these are the various ways in which the disease can be diagnosed. So finally, let's talk about the treatment of the mumps virus. So the treatment of the mumps virus is supportive. Symptoms may be relieved by the application of intermittent ice or heat to the affected neck or testicular area and by acetaminophen for pain relief. Warm water, salt gargles, soft foods and extra fluids may also help relieve symptoms. Acetosilicylic acid, which is aspirin, is not used to treat children with mumps due to the risk of Rye syndrome. So instead, we can actually use acetaminophen. And that brings us to the end of this video on the mumps virus. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you found the presentation very interesting and informative. Please make sure to like, comment, subscribe and share. And please make sure you turn on your bell notifications so you'll be notified every time we have a new upload. If you'd like to download a copy of this presentation, you may do so by clicking the link in the description. Take care and bye for now.